So in the last uh, few months, the conversation surrounding LGBTQ plus in Ghana has been gathering a bit of momentum. We've seen the uh, police moving to crack the whip. A few people have been arrested in, in relation to this. But then the bigger conversation is around a bail that some members of parliament are sponsoring on this particular issue. Ghana is moving pretty quickly to try and state um, our position on this matter, not only through words, but through actual specific legislation. But there are those who disagree with the approach, who may like to use the word homophobia. But those who are in support of the bill would like to stress that it's about protecting societal values. And tonight, we're going to get into this very complex conversation within the context of a global community, which is increasingly, especially in the West, promoting this agenda quite forcefully around the concept of human rights. You want to stay with us as we delve into this very complex matter. Now, we know that as far as the um, individuals pushing this particular bill is concerned, they want to introduce this law as has been uh, articulated to criminalize LGBTQ+, and its uh, activities submitted to parliament now. And they've already sent this first draft, we understand has been presented to the speaker of parliament. So they, this is, they're not taking this, um, you know, lying down. They're making a very serious move here on this matter. It's rare in Ghana to have a private member's bill, but this is what we're going to see in this particular case. It tells you how seriously the members of parliament are taking this. The speaker of parliament is a very known public advocate against um, this particular matter. He believes Ghana's uh, fundamental hum uh, values as a society and culturally must be upheld. Uh, and he, he used some very strong words and he, he, he became international headlines that uh, the LGBTQI is a pandemic and is worse than COVID-19. Very, very strong words there uh, coming from the Speaker of the House and that will pass uh, a law. He puts a timeline to this by the end of uh, uh, you know this year. 2021. I remember that he had not shied away at all when he's been visited by foreign embassies to make the point to them that we'll respect human rights, but we'll not abandon our values and traditions and culture. He's been very clear on this very matter. Now, these are some of the members of parliament. Uh, it includes the deputy uh, education minister who uh, came together and, and sent their, uh, this bill to the speaker of parliament there and they were, they were a very strong coalition of uh, you know members of parliament who did this uh, and eight mps in all uh, came together to to do this and here are they um, very strong members of parliament will be speaking shortly to mr emmanuel bedra uh, who of course is a co-sponsor of the bill uh, together with george samo uh, george mp for ningo pram pram we also see there uh, some of our joint team, who is, a, as I said, a, a deputy minister. We'll see Hassan Suhini, Helen Tosso, uh, Roxin Dafiamekbo, a legal brain, possibly lengthy his support to, to drafting this uh, in, in making it clear. Uh, Sam George has given us some clarity on what they seek to do with this particular bill. Uh, he says the bill it, it will respect fundamental human rights for all persons, non uh, gay and lesbian people, as well as um, gay and lesbian people, but spells out a rigid punitive measure in line with our social, cultural, religious stance as a nation. What is that e exactly? How do you do that without discriminating against the other? We will talk about that. Now, Aman Babwing also had some words when they met him. Uh, he made it clear to the Australian High Commission recently when he paid a visit to him uh, that Ghana, uh, the country, cannot condone homosexuality. It's as, as clear as that. The president has also been very clear on this, that not under his watch, not under his watch, will homosexuality ever be legalized. And so this is a continuing trend in our leadership. And again, if you go to the, the former Speaker of Parliament, also a very renowned Reverend Minister himself, he's been very clear on this matter himself, that this is something that, uh, you know, Ghana should not condone. Um, there, there's almost a setting consensus at the political leadership level that we should, we should go beyond rhetoric and pass a law to, to sort of uh, control its, uh, its further spreading. The rest of the, we know, on the back of everything else that has happened, there have been some 
police arrest of the whole 21 activists who were arrested and charged uh, relating to suspicion that they were engaged in promoting uh, homosexuality. Police officers also raided the house in the Sean Man there because of the suspicion that LGBTQ people were gathering to promote the activities. It also alleged being used as an office for an LGBTQ rights and, and, and shelter. So we're going to look at this bill um, that the members of parliament have put forward. It's a, it's a big deal because uh, if you put it in the context of the global conversation, uh, Ghana seems to be going, as some have said, against the tide because the West, and they put a lot of money into our economy, donor support. They are aggressively pushing for, you know, liberalizing the space when it comes to LGBTQ issues, especially when you have uh, a, a democratic incumbent in the White House who believes in uh, the matter of, uh, of the rights uh, for these. And they gave us a lot, of, a lot of aid. So the key question to ask is, how is government or Ghana going to balance passing a, a legislation that, as has been said, will criminalize the activities, but also expecting that the West will not come hard at us? How do we walk that fine line? Want to stay with me? Very complex conversation we'd like to have tonight as we look at all sides of this conversation. Stay with me. Uh, thanks for staying with us here on uh, PM Express. Uh, my guest uh, joining me tonight is uh, Robert Akotoa Mafu, who is a former uh, country director at uh, Amnesty International Ghana. He is a human rights activist. Uh, also joining us uh, tonight is uh, we also have Hassan Suhini, he's a member of parliament. He's one of those uh, uh, behind the bill that has gone to, to parliament now, and the speaker is considering he joins us on the phone. Um, gentlemen, thank you for your time here on uh, PM Express. Uh, Mr. Suhin, I guess I want to start with you. So, I mean, give us a rationale behind this bill that uh, yourself and your colleagues have, uh, have submitted now, we understand, to the speaker. Thank you very much. Good evening to you and good evening to uh, your uh, viewers. It's a pleasure to be with you this evening. Um, first of all, um, Personally, I came to the conference uh, after listening to many people uh, on this subject that we tend to have a clash of three perspectives as far as the issue of um, lesbianism is concerned. So you have those who speak from the cultural perspective. You have those who speak from the human rights perspective. And then you have those who also speak from the faith perspective perspective, that is a religious perspective. Now, it is difficult for one to say that uh, a person of faith, say one who believes in the Bible or Quran, should be okay with the promotion of uh, lesbianism. It's difficult. It is like asking the person to abandon a certain aspect of his or her faith. So when you find people of faith um, uh, kicking against the promotion, of that way of life. You need to understand them. You necessarily cannot afford to think that they are being unreasonable because that is their faith. Then you have those who also speak from the cultural angle, who say this is our way of life. Just as polygamy is more like an African way of life. And I believe that if Africans attempt to impose that way of life on a section of uh, uh, Europeans or the Americans, uh, they will find it absurd. They will think it's unreasonable, it's unthinkable. But Africans really um, do not find polygamy to be, you know, uh, unreasonable and unthinkable. So it is our way of life. So you find people who argue from that angle who say that uh, as a way of life, lesbianism has not been part of it. And so we cannot uh, be asked to tolerate it, just as we cannot ask Europeans to uh, accept polygamy. So you need to necessarily understand their perspective also. Then you have the human rights activists, whose calling it is to also ensure that um, people, even if they are 
determined to be criminals still have their rights preserved. And that is why it will be wrong for uh, mob injustice, for example, to be promoted. The fact that you catch someone even in the act of stealing does not take away the person's rights. Even in prison, it is expected that people's dignity, right to dignity, will be preserved. So to ask the human rights activists to also ignore the threat that people engage in the acts are faced with is to deny the person, you know, the right to respond to his or her calling. Now, when you aggregate all these perspectives, we then, therefore, you come to a conclusion that we will need a law that will that will that will aggregate these perspectives in such a way that none is affected. Nobody, you know, holding each of these perspectives is 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 unfairly treated. So the law we seek to present to Parliament is first of all to establish the fact that this is this should be proscribed. This should 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 be determined as illegal based on our cultural beliefs, based on our religious beliefs, as as Africans and as people of faith. But it must also be 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 be, be the, 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 the environment must also be conducive enough for people who are engaged in it and need help to get help without anybody antagonizing them without anybody, you know, uh, 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 taking them through any form of in, in, indignity. You know, they, so, so the law is, is, is carved with, 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 with the rights of the people who engage in it in mind. The right to seek medical care, for example, the right for them to seek uh, psychological help when they need it, the right for them to seek uh, uh, even even because we are people of faith, uh, 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 whatever can can support systems can help them get out of it. But we will not, you know, support any law that will seek to say that this is a way of life that must be promoted for others who are not even engaged in it to embrace it. But we 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 were careful to 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 state that. It must be like all other crimes in this country, be made a crime that people, even when they engage in it, should still be entitled to the right, like all other criminals are entitled to a right. Or all others who fall foul of the law, not just necessarily criminals, are entitled to, to their rights as citizens. So, so even that okay. is the 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 the, 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 the conviction with, 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 with which we we met with people who have the legal background to help us draft this law. And so I will urge many people to not just listen to the debate and the discussion, but to get a copy of that proposal. We believe that it can become, you know, a guiding tool for many nations to deal with this very topical issue in such a way that all sectors of, 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 of the society will feel that their points of view have been, you know, respected and, 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 and uh, you know, captured. Yeah, okay. So just for clarity, this bill fundamentally criminalizes the act of homosexuality and lesbianism. That is what it seeks to do. Okay. It seeks to make it black and white that it is not lawful in this country. And I'm saying it is grounded on our faith as a people. It is also grounded on our culture. That is our way of life. Let us remember the definition of culture as we're all taught back in school, a way of life of a people. And how, that is why I, I always would like to use our way of life in Africa that tolerates and accepts polygamy which will be seen absurd and unthinkable if attempts are made to promote it in Europe. Mm. Okay, stay with me. Let me bring in um, Robert Amwafo, who, of course, is a human rights campaigner, former head of the Amnesty International. 
uh, here in, in, uh, in Ghana. Uh, Robert, so you've heard the argument from the members of the member of parliament explaining what this new bill is. Your reaction to that? Thank you very much, Evans, and um, good evening to you and your viewers, and then also to Honourable. And I'm very happy that Honourable um, mentioned the idea of human rights as one of the key pointers that this law seeks to look at. Um, first of all, to say that I think that it's important that for anybody to make any law, you should understand what they are working with. Now, I've made, I've had certain pronouncements by the, the, the member of parliament and even in the studio on the issue of homosexuality and sexual orientation, gender identity, what is sexual orientation um, and what is gender identity, what is lesbian, what is gay, what is transgender. Those things need to be understood by these people who are seeking to make a law to criminalize it. Do they understand it from all speaking, all conversations that I've had um, as a researcher myself on these issues, none of them seems to understand what they are talking about. And therefore, it is quite worrying that they seek to make a law on something they do not understand. They are using their own cultural understanding of what they believe is, is, is Ghanaian culture, which we seek to even investigate that from what anthropologists have shown. Um, that culture is diverse, and then also to understand where they come from with the fact that it is not our way of life. Because if it is something that the British brought a law to come and criminalize, was it in existence? Why was a law brought from the, by the British who came to criminalize us to, to criminalize it? You know, so for me, these are the questions that I think that these people need to interrogate with um, um, experts in this area, um, um, Professor Tuba has written very widely on it, and his research and, and his paper really gives some deep details, even to our current law. So for me, I am worried that um, our, our Honorable also talks about human rights and um, seeks to forget the principles of human rights, which seeks, talks about universality, talks about independ uh, interdependence, it talks about an um, inalienable um, of these rights. And so when you talk about these things, clearly um, all that has been said so far are elements of homophobia. And the fact that you don't know about something, so you fear it, and so you try to do things that would make it look bad, or you use bigotry um, to use as a means of making it look so bad so that society will continue pushing it to the negative side. So for me, um, that's my, my reaction um, of, it, of it. And I'll be very happy to have a copy of the bill because um, as a researcher um, and as an expert in this area, it would be very interesting to interrogate with this bill and understand how it's drafted. Because for me, looking at other countries like Uganda and Nigeria who have criminalized um, um, these things, if you look at their law, you really understand that these parliamentarians were in a rush. They were using religion, culture, and so they didn't even draft these bills properly. Um, they, they, they did it because, you know, religious people came to Ro them Robert, in, Robert, in you the parliament about... to, um, um, to pray and Hello, to Robert. show religion. Hi. Hello, Robert. So, you, you, talk about, you talk about the MPs using religion and culture. What else? I mean, every law is based or derived from a people's culture. Right? I mean, so what else must inform a law other than exactly what you've stated? which is what they've done. Our culture, our religion, and those uh, values definitely must influence the law locally. That's what they've done. So that, that's a question I asked about culture. What is culture? If you seek to say that culture is a way of life, have you interrogated the way of life of a people? And that is the other question I asked. So for me, I come to this discussion with a lot of questions to these people who are seeking to make a law, whether they have done their research properly and they are able to make this law on firm grounds. So like I mentioned before, that if uh, the British brought a law to criminalize homosexuality, was it there or wasn't there? Was it a part of uh, the people? Why was that law brought to come and criminalize homosexuality in Africa? You know, and, and so that is for me more questions as, as somebody who interrogates these things and try to find answers that would seek to say that 
if a person seeks to criminalize something and say that this thing wasn't there and it's not our way of life, it's not our religion, who brought religion? What is religion? What sort of religion are we talking about? You know, for me, that is what I, I say that I come here humbly with a lot of questions to these people to give clear understanding to legal minds, to researchers on the basis of making this law and why they don't seek to, 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 um, to engage with the key people who may be in this situation and understand. There's a lot of research. I have conducted research, a lot of research I've mentioned, Professor Tukba has written all of that. So that is, that is important. The institution of Shraj works with LGBT people. Um, a Ghana AIDS Commission work with LGBT people. Have they been consulted? Why are they working on it? I was part of a team that went to the, um, the Human Rights Council and for our last UPR, the government said that we are going to protect LGBT people from violence. Ghana is part of the African Union and the African Commission on Human Rights and African Commission on Human and People's Rights has passed a resolution, resolution 275, that calls on all state parties to protect LGBT people from violence. So if a country that is part of the African Union and is part of the African Human Rights, um, African Commission on Human and People's Rights has been part of this and saying this is not African values, why is the African Commission, that is a conglomerate of all African countries putting together a law that seeks to say, protect these people. Recently, when the, the 21 were arrested, the African Commission released a press statement condemning what Ghana has done. So it's for me, it's more of one, is it out of emotions of our religion that this is our religion, this is our culture, and that is what you hear. And that is why I still seek to interrogate that what culture? Mm. And then stay, Ghana, stay, stay, Ghana's stay, stay, law, stay with Ghana's me. constitution stay, stay with me, is, um... We'll come to the constitutional issue. Stay with me. I want to, a lot of questions that have been asked. Uh, we are joined also by uh, Roxin Dafia Mekbo, uh, who himself is a lawyer and a member of the, of the, of the uh, MPs group that are sponsoring uh, this particular bill. Joins us on the, on the line now. Um, Roxin, thanks for uh, joining us on PM Express. See, there's a fundamental question that has been asked. Um, well, well, I mean, Robert, uh, you know, with the... Uh, former head of Amnesty International makes the point that what you guys are doing is homophobia and that there are fundamental questions that need to be, needs to be answered, particularly how are you defining um, gay and lesbian for which reason you're criminalizing it? Um, thank you very much. Uh, good evening to your, your viewers. I have listened to Robert carefully and I think he should desist from speaking in a very condescending tone to us. He should stop describing our actions as one founded on emotion. We are better than that. Now, he speaks of human rights. And he thinks that we don't have the right to, 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 to enact the law to prohibit the conduct that we that in a, in the, in the in, with the greatest respect to him, we find criminal and unnatural. Is he aware that stealing is is, is, is a criminal offense almost everywhere in this world? So, because people have rights, we should allow them to steal. Is that what he's saying? Because we we are we are we sign on to international protocols on human rights. So he says that we should allow people who now don't even know where they belong. Now they are it used to be it used to be lesbian. Now they are bisexual. Now they are transgender. They are in in in, in, in that sense. Some are queer. And they are, they are saying that they are adding on. Where are we headed? Robert should tell me that the Q plan that they, they speak about. So tomorrow, my child, seven years, seven years, will get up and say, Daddy, I, I think I am a mom. 
Now, what the, the, the most dangerous thing some of these people are engaged in, my brother, is that they are going about adopting children from other persons. So whilst we are fighting that some of these materials do not even find their way into our curriculum at the basic level, they are going to court and adopting children and are introducing children to their, 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 their way of life. Why must an innocent child be introduced to somebody's choice of life? Why? You don't want to give birth, but you want somebody to give birth so you adopt. If somebody doesn't give birth, how would you adopt? And Robert, since that we don't understand what we are doing, it's a very offensive comment. And I think it's we draw and apologize. That as MPs who are sponsoring this bill, we don't understand what we are doing. And we are doing so because we are emotional. And he says we are, we are homophobic. I beg your pardon. Nobody is talking about homophobia here. Why would they go to Saudi Arabia? and propagate some of these some of these ideas. Why why are they afraid of going to Saudi Arabia? Is it not because of the culture of the people and the religion so strong that you can't even contemplate some of these things in Saudi Arabia Hello, and some of the Emirati countries? Hello? You come to Africa and want to you know, want to talk on the Sendini attack. I mean, but, but Roxing, what about the, the questions, because this is, this is uh, plans to criminalize the action. But wh why, the, the question that he raises is, what sort of, and, 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 what, what sort of consultations have you done, for example, about, you know, in the background to, to come to the conclusion that this is an act that needs to be criminalized? In fact, it's, we are not criminalizing any act. We are saying that, Somebody's choice of life should not be an acceptable way of life for everybody. In the same way, when a person picks up a gun and goes to rob another and says that that is my, it's my right to rob, that cannot be accepted to society. And let me correct it. It is not the white man who brought the law of sodomy to us. The law of sodomy was criminalized in, in 1962. You should check the law. You should change the law. It wasn't brought by the colonials. We decided as a free people to criminalize our natural canal knowledge as far back as in the 60s. I think it is contained in Act 29, the Criminal Offenses Act. So that should be a 1950 law. It wasn't any colonial master who brought it to us. We, we knew what we were about as far back as then. So you should stop talking as if, as parliamentarians, we don't understand what we are doing. Roxy, you say you're not criminalizing, but let me ask this. If the bill you propose is passed, and can I still go ahead and practice um, gay or lesbian if indeed that's my choice without the police knocking on my door? Uh, you, 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 you know that there are a lot of things people do that, 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 that constitutes crime. In the, in, the, in the deepest recesses of their homes. So we are saying that if you, if you decide to be gay, stay in your home. Stay in the closest of your home and do whatever you want. But to suggest that it should become a way of life of our people is an offense. That's what we are saying. Hmm. If you are a thief, stay in your home and steal. But when you come out and steal somebody's property, and you are caught, it's a crime. That's the point we are making. You yeah. see, yes, they, they, but, they, but, they, but they, what you've just described is, is making it a criminal act to actually practice or express a preference to be gay or lesbian. Hello? Roxy, can you hear me? Hello? Can you hear me, Roxy? Hello? I think I may have, let me bring in Suhini to try and fix that uh, line with the connection with the line there. I mean, so Suhini, you had the Robert earlier, and of course we've just yeah. 
been listening to Roxing, of course, is a, brings a legal question into this whole equation. I mean, the, right. I want to go back to the cultural and religious question that Robert raises. I mean, fundamentally, though, I mean, these are human beings who have a certain preference, right? I mean, the religion and the cultural argument that has become the foundation for the bill, um, isn't it flying in the face of people's rights that we are hoisting religion and culture over those fundamental rights of expression, expression as defined to include uh, my expression of my sexual rights? Well, Ivan, um, religion, first of all, and morality are the foundation of every law. Show me a law that does not have religion and morality as its foundation. Perhaps it's even the reason why when we make all the fine laws and put them into a constitution, our presidents don't swear with the constitution. They swear with the Bible or the Quran. That is religion. It tells you the, 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 the importance of religion and even the need to uphold the law. When people are made to swear the oath, they do so in the name of the Most High and not in the name of the Constitution. So it is, for want of a better word, I think it is, it is, it is less knowledgeable, I will not say ignorant, to suggest that religion has no place in the administration or enact, enactment of law. Religion is key. And so is, the, is, is, is our, our, our way of life also. And I heard Robert talk about the, the AU, you know, uh, protocol that all African countries signed up to to ensure that they protect, you know, uh, um, uh, people engage in lesbianism and not to, uh, you know, encourage violence against them. Even I said that is what the law seeks to do. The law is to ensure that people who are engaged in it are protected from abuse, from violence, so that nobody has the right to harm them on the street without taking them through the legal process. So the law is not unaware of the need to protect them against violence. I mean, as we are proposing it, the law as we are proposing it, has taken into consideration the right, their right to dignity, their right to life, their right to health, their right to be protected by the state. And even, even petty thieves have a right to be protected from violence. Not so. The fact that we agree as a nation to protect people who engage in something we find unacceptable from violence should not mean that we embrace their conduct and promote it. I don't know if you are getting me. So Robert must understand that as a country, the fact that we have agreed that people engage in something we find unacceptable should be protected from violence is a testimony I mean, it's a, it's a testimony of our law-abiding nature. So even when they are engaged in something we find unacceptable, we still have the duty to prevent them from violence. And the law we are proposing is to do just that. Mm. Take them through the legal process if you think they are doing anything wrong. But do not stone, beat, or attack them by virtue of their life choices that they have made, even though, even if that, those life choices are, 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 are outlawed, as we want to, because we are seeking to outlaw the practice, the promotion of it, and I like the angle that Roxton also even introduced, the fact that they will not be permitted to adopt children, because, I mean, it, it's unthinkable for you not to want to procreate, that will take from the fruit of procreation. 
So th those are some of the things that we, we, we seek to do. And, and, and Robert also talks about our culture that needs to be improved. Look, we, some of us have engaged and consulted and researched into this topic before throwing our weight behind it. We are not just driven by sentiments and emotions. I even have, been, have worked in the media for a while. And as a result of my media work, I came face to face with people who are engaged in this practice. A couple of times, I even had the opportunity of interviewing some of them in my studio, help them to disguise themselves to appear on my show. So I understand the community and what they go through. And so it will be ignorant on my part to have a, an opportunity to help and not, you know, consider what they also go through and what their needs are. Even generally what brands are across, majority of them, when you speak to them, they are not proud of the practice. They need help. Majority of them are not proud of the practice. Sometimes they are not just able to help themselves. And it, is, it must be seen, in my view, as a psychological or medical condition. Hmm. It should not be embraced and promoted for others to want to leave that way. It must be seen as a medical or psychological condition that, 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 that helps if need be, 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 be provided for. Yeah, I mean, and, and Suhino, you raise a point I want to put to Robert. Robert, we've seen recently a, a setting concerted efforts um, by people who believe in the LGBTQ agenda to recruit groom people and to propagate their, their beliefs and to get people into their fold. In fact, uh, two weeks ago, we did a story from uh, Ola Girls, where the head teacher there, in addressing the PTA, was very concerned that the school had been infiltrated uh, by LGBTQ advocates um, who are recruiting and grooming these girls, um, and their campaigning is, is quite active. I mean, that is definitely something that also infringes on people's rights. When people believe in a setting, um, you know, have a setting dispensation towards an issue and are now aggressively recruiting others to be part of that particular, you know, particular belief system, which affronts the setting societal cultural norms. That's certainly something that um, a society cannot endorse. Thank you very much. I would have loved to address a lot of the issues that were raised. And just to say that, like I said before, I come humbly with a lot of questions and, and not to be sound condescending. Like I said before, I am a researcher and I work in this area. And so when people decide to do these things and I see these um, angles and portfolios, I need to find out what the basis are. And I, there's no way that I am trying to twat what um, our honorables are trying to do. First of all, to say that it's, you know, the language that we use, you know, is, is we need to be very careful, especially when we say aggressively recruiting. What do Christians do? You know, I, I think it's important that we, we, we are careful that we don't make it, you know, it, it's... So you, you're not, you're not certainly it, equating Christianity with gay and lesbian, lesbianism or gayism, right? You know, you're not equating the two, day, are you? I'm not equating, but I'm talking about the language that we use, yeah. you know, to say aggressively, you know, it's, it, it, you know, it gives some sort of picture that doesn't communicate and, and, and properly. I think that it's important that we get the idea that if we use the words, you know, it's very important, recruitment, recruiting. It, it, it's important, that's why I always say that we need to understand this thing mm -hmm. and sexuality education is important that when somebody wants to talk about the idea that it is a medical issue and, and, and it's, it's psychological, the World Health Organization removed this thing from the system as a, as a medical issue long ago. And that is why these days we celebrate something called International Day Against Homophobia. To, to say that the idea that um, um, homosexuality was seen as something that's medical is, 
psychological. Even today, we talk about something, what they mentioned is called conversion therapy, where certain countries 50 years ago in the US, as they were discussed like we are doing today in the US, in the UK, 50 years ago, 70 years ago, the discussion we are having today, that is what they were doing. It's not different. It is, it is just the same thing that was happening, that there were lawmakers like as we are having now who are talking about conversion therapy, we're talking about a medical issue, we're talking about people are recruiting. If you understand that gay and lesbianism is not an issue of choice, one. It is sexuality. Every individual born has a sexuality. People who are heterosexuals are heterosexuals. There are people who are homosexuals and they are homosexuals. They don't go about recruiting people. If somebody does something to a child, that is wrong. We already have laws that are supposed to go against those people. So we have the law against anybody who causes defilement or sexual harassment or whatever law that there is to punish anybody who, who is an adult and goes about to go and go to children and try to push them into things. Those laws are there, we can use them. So then the idea of saying that, well, we are making laws to protect them and we are making laws, the laws are there. Are they working? I have been in police stations where LGBT people who have been brought to the police station who are reporting a case of abuse against them are abused by the police. So then what are we talking about? Are the laws that already exist that these people are standing on to get their rights, are they working? You get it? And that is what I'm saying, that we need to interrogate these things carefully before we start making laws against them. Recruiting people, I think it's wrong. We shouldn't use that language. If somebody does something wrong that according to our law already exists, let's use the law against them. If a person goes to a school and they found that they are gay, they are homosexual, they are heterosexual straight, when they go to a school and they are engaging with children below the age of, 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 of 18 and they are doing something that is wrong, let's use the law that we have already. Let's not hide behind this preaching of morality, which if we start to talk about today, we will not finish. Um, the issue of religion, which we would say that is, is all Ghanaians that believe in the religion that we talk about. Which religion are we talking about? But all religions, I mean, for, for Ghanaian, all the religions that we hold there, Christian, um, Muslim, tra African traditional religion, none of, none of those uh, get, have a place there for gay and lesbians. It's, uh, it's, it's just what it is. So, no, then you are not doing your, you are, you are not interrogating the people, right? Because I am a Christian and I don't hold that belief that gay people should be criminalized. There are Christians who have their own beliefs. So you can't, on top of it, all say Christians, Muslims, traditionalists. No, that's wrong. It's important that you interrogate this properly and you use what is the best practice, which is the secular nation. Let's not make our country a theocracy. We are not a theocracy. We are a country that is ruled by secular laws we use the laws, we say these laws are laws that are supposed to go by everybody. Our constitution says that human rights protection for all persons, you know. So it's important that when we are having these discussions, we put this into context, into an area where we talk about the ideas of promoting and protecting people. Now, somebody will ask a simple question. How can you compare somebody's sexual orientation to theft? I mean, does it make logical um, agreement? It doesn't. How can you equate that somebody who has a particular sexual orientation, just like a straight person, uh -huh. would go into their room or wherever two consenting adults go to wherever they are, have their sexual orientation and come and, and come into public and do their everyday work? How do you criminalize the person or put a law in place that put the person in light of getting violence? Now, let me just quickly say, that if you look at countries who have criminalized um, LGBT explicitly, like Nigeria, like Uganda, it has been used as a weapon of violence against the community. And I would refer you to the Elga Report 2020 report and read those reports and find out how these laws 
are used against the community that you seek. I had um, um, uh, Honorable Sweeney talking about these laws to come and protect LGBT. Let me, I, there's evidence, and if you look in even your joy news, that any time any specific, the former Speaker of Parliament made a particular statement against the community, or any time a religious leader made a particular statement against the community, there was violence against the community. So then these are the things that I think that's important that we need to interrogate before mm. we make any law. Stay, 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 stay with me, um, Robert, because I want to take a quick, when I return, I want to hear from Roxy in the family point, what the point that you make there. I mean, why do we need a separate law? Don't we already have in our code a, a law that um, makes it criminal to be engaging on natural canal knowledge? Isn't that enough? And by the way, the Constitution talks about a person shall not be discriminated against on the grounds of gender, and they argue that that is an issue in LGBTQ, race, ethnicity, uh, color, uh, religion, creed, or social economic status. I mean, isn't this going to discriminate against a certain group of people just because of their sexual orientation? Stay with me. Uh, we get a, a, a complex conversation around the LGBTQ issues with the bill that the parliamentarians have put together, uh, which we are, uh, we've heard from the Speaker of Parliament, uh, will become law possibly by the end of the year. Uh, we have uh, Robert Amafo, who of course is a former head of the uh, Amnesty International in Ghana Human Rights Activist. Um, uh, Ahasa <clears throat> Suhini is also a member of Parliament, and Roxanne Dafiamekbo. Uh, who, of course, is part of the MPs who drafted this particular bill. And to him next, I go. I mean, um, Roxing, let me ask you this. So we have a unnatural canon knowledge, which is explicitly mentioned in our laws, which is, which is, which is a criminal act. Do we need another law um, specifying what, what exactly? And, and plus, I mentioned earlier, the Constitution is clear about non-discrimination. Um, isn't this going to be one of those that may infringe on the Constitution? Now, uh, uh, thank you. It's a, it's a very strong constitutional law argument to make to suggest that because the Constitution says that a person shall not be discriminated against on grounds of sex or gender, and therefore when a person says um, he, he expresses himself or herself or his sexuality by saying that he's gay, or he has an affinity for uh, uh, the, the same the same sex or the same gender, and the Constitution will save it. It will not. The Constitution is very clear when they use the term sex and gender. When you are biologically male and you decide to be to become female by 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 choice because of a certain sex, sexual orientation. That's your problem. That is sexual sexual orientation is not the same as sex or gender. Now, when you are biologically female and you, by choice, decide that you should be called a male and you should be protected, that is not the kind of protection the Constitution contemplates. Now, no right in our Constitution, apart from the right to life, is absolutely even the right to life. It's not absolute. It can be taken. Your life can be taken if you commit certain offenses that are established in law. So let 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 not the pro gay advocate say that because the constitution simply states that there ought not to be discrimination on grounds of sex and gender, um, the LGBTQ community should be protected absolutely. No. Yes, I agree. That there's a provision in our in our in at twenty nine that 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 makes any any conduct that pertains to non natural criminal knowledge an offence. But the difficulties we have had in prosecuting such offences is that it's a very limited provision, and so we we want by this law to make it very comprehensive. For instance, uh, Evan, there there are groups of people now who are constituents turn themselves into gangs and are engaged in robbery. And I will see, and I will insist in saying so, 
that because they have rights, we should allow them to form themselves into social gangs and, and, and steal from people. No, such a conduct has to be proscribed by law. Mm. Now, because, because you have the, the right to engage in, in a sexual activity, we should allow you to have sexual, sexual intercourse with a child under 18. No. Mm. Well, Rob, Rob, Rob Singh, I'm, I'm grateful that uh, you join us with your thoughts. Um, we will see, we'll get a copy of this draft and then lay it out as to what exactly the attempts to do. But I'm grateful, gentlemen, for your time, your appearance. Robert, thank you very much. This is a conversation we'll definitely return to. Once it gets to the floor of Parliament for debate, you can be sure it's going to become a very, very heated conversation, and we'll get into it again. Enjoy the rest of your evening.